if you're new to my channel, this is Automotive Anonymous. I do a few car reviews every week so that you guys can be more informed and have an idea of what you might be looking for before you decide to go to one of the dealers that you might be considering. Today we are doing a comparison video between the 2023 Subaru Outback, specifically it's a Limited XT in crimson red and a brand new Forester in autumn green metallic. These are highly sold, highly sought after vehicles. They both sell way over 100,000 a year in the United States, and today I'm going to review them. These are both Top Safety Pick Plus Japanese built all-wheel drive crossover unibody vehicles, and they're both fantastic. For 2023, I've actually reviewed individually all eight trim levels of the Outback. It had a refreshed front end for this year with a little bit more cladding on the front bumper, and then I've done all but the base for the 2023 Foresters. So you can find those reviews if you're interested. Otherwise, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison, go through the specs, starting with the exterior, then we'll walk around, go through the interior, and show you back-to-back -back of how they compare to each other. And if you like either of these vehicles, give the video a thumbs up and comment below to tell me what your thoughts are. Have you owned one? Have you driven one? I recommend you do both. At least drive one before you buy it. But there is a lot of other good competition between the RAV4, the CX-5, the CRV. There's quite a few that you can pick from, but if you're looking Subaru, if you're comparing the Outback and the similarly priced Forester, what might you be getting yourself in for? There's quite a few similarities between these two, but there's also quite a few differences. Some of the similarities include really bright LED headlights. They both have 8.7 inches of ground clearance with a final drive ratio of 3.70 which is a pretty good balance of putting down the torque, but also having pretty decent MPG. You can get a 2.5 liter in either of these. It makes 182 horse, but the turbo Outback actually can go up to 260 horse, 277 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 in all my individual comparisons of these on average at 4,000 feet of altitude where we live is pretty similar if you're going 2.5 liter in either. But if you're going turbo, these are in real life about two and a half to three and a half seconds faster depending on the weather temps, how hot it is, your altitude, and factors like that. They also have a whole host of safety features with the eyesight cameras for all the adaptive cruise, automatic braking, reverse automatic braking, rear cross traffic alert, features like that, blind spot monitoring. You really get a lot when you're going Subaru. Again, the Outback is a limited XT, so it's the second highest trim level just below the Touring XT. And this Forester is actually the Touring. So this is as fancy as it gets. Typically you can identify Touring by the color of the side mirrors. But there's also a lot of differences. So it's time to take them back to back and show you exactly what is different between the 23 Outback and the 23 Forester. The standard Outback has roof rails that can fold out. Whereas the Forester has fixed roof rails. So you'd have to get your own crossbars for them. A base Forester is a little bit cheaper than a base Outback in that it starts at about 26,500 in the US. Whereas the Outback now starts about 28,000. Also the Outback sold in 2022 a whopping 147,000, whereas this Forester sold a measly 114,000. So not as much as previous years. The Outback is in its fourth generation that started in 2020. And then 23 was the refresh with those non-functional cladding. Whereas the Forester, it started its fifth generation in 2019 and it had a front end facelift in 2022 and it looks pretty darn cool both of these have a wilderness trim level that i reviewed back to back wildernesses a few months ago and now we know that the cross trek has a wilderness version that got released yesterday pretty exciting if you're an off-road enthusiast or you want the enthusiast trim level of either of these vehicles the forester has a 16.6 .6 gallon gas tank located on the passenger side so if you're getting 26 city 33 highway you're up to 457 miles of road tripping baby whereas the outback is a little bit larger it's actually an 18.5 gallon tank getting similar mpg but 26 city 32 on the highway you're almost 600 miles of road tripping but if you get a turbo version it's a little bit less than that worth it i would say the outback actually weighs a little bit more it's 3650 pounds all the way up to 3900 depending on configuration and what engine it has whereas the forester is a whopping 3450 up to 3600 pounds where it only has one engine there's a little bit less weight dispersity between the various trim levels because they basically share the same subaru global system architecture the forester actually has a larger payload than the outback 
all things considered, it can hold 1,200 to 1,400 pounds between people, passenger, occupants, pets, whatever you have in it, whereas the Outback is limited to about 1,100 to 1,200. Another interesting difference with the Forester is it can only tow 1,500 pounds, but if you go with the Wilderness, it's up to 3,000. That's probably due to some upgraded components, such as its final drive ratio, whereas the Outback, the base, with the 2.5 Boxer, same as the Forester, can actually tow 2,700 pounds, or if you get the turbo, you're up to 3,500. Both of these vehicles are six feet wide and five and a half feet tall, but the difference is the Outback is basically a full foot longer. It's about 16 feet rather than the Forester's 15 feet. So one less foot means you're gonna be fitting in your parking space better, gonna have a little bit more room in the garage, and that might matter to you. But the trade-off is you don't have the same length for some of the cargo you might be having, or if you're gonna be car camping, you might not be able to stretch out as much as you can in this 16-foot long Outback. A number of people in the forums have mentioned that the Outback, even despite its name, is not as good as off-roading as the Forester. But honestly, guys, I think they're too close to really call it one way or the other. The Outback has a turning circle of 36 feet. The Forester is only a half foot shorter at 35.4 feet. Sure, its approach and departure angle is slightly better than the Outback, but it's honestly within a couple degrees. I don't think it's gonna make a whole lot of difference. The Outback additionally has a nine foot wheelbase, whereas the Forester is three inches shorter, so it might give you a little bit more stability on the road, but honestly, these vehicles are so close, it's hard to really justify that one is ultimately superiorly better, rather than just a minimal difference that may or may not be noticeable. Most of us don't abuse our vehicles off-roading and doing crazy terrain that a big lifted truck or Jeep might be more capable of. So I honestly don't think you guys are gonna notice a whole lot of difference. That's my opinion. Comment below, tell me why I'm wrong. Both of these come with competent all season tires, a 225, 55, 18 on this Forester and a 225, 60, 18 on the Outback. So you get just a tiny bit more sidewall on the Outback. I have no doubt that either tire should last you a minimum of 40 or 50,000 miles. On my own personal Outback Wilderness, it has about 27,000 miles. And those tires have over half of their safe amount of tread left. So they hold up pretty well. These vehicles don't weigh a lot, so they don't put a lot of pressure rubbing out that rubber all too fast. If you've made it this far, I congratulate you guys. We're gonna finally hop inside and show you the difference in your space where you're gonna occupy the vehicle. It's pretty windy out, so I'm sure you'll appreciate a little bit less wind noise, so let's dive right in. Both vehicles come with a proximity key with lock and lock, hatch and alarm. They have the proximity key features, so you can leave the key in your pocket and get into the vehicle. You also can get into the vehicle with the pin code that's down here, and I have a video on how to set that. It's a really cool feature to access your vehicle without having the key even on you. The door panel on this Touring is, as you can expect, really nice. A lot of soft touch materials, nice big handle. You can even store some stuff down there. Stitching above the door card and the lunar moon landing with your memory seats, really cool. Harman Kardon speakers sound fantastic on Subarus, especially with how well insulated they are. Bottle holder and a bunch of snacks. Nothing on the door sill other than this miniature size Subaru door sill plate. Rubberized pedals and mats, fuses, hood release, and look at all those settings that you have on the loaded Touring. You also have the lunar moon landing up there. Power seats, the leather looks fantastic. You don't get an extendable thigh support like you would on a few other trim levels, like the Outback you're about to see. And then a fantastic giant moonroof, which can be seen there and far exceeds what you get in the Outback, which is the same size as the Legacy sedan it's based off of. Now on the Outback, the door panel looks very familiar, very similar to the Forester, but instead of the lunar moon landing, you get like a piano black, you still have the memory seats, Harman Kardon speakers, bottle holder, snacks, with a good size grab handle. And then a medium size Subaru, you get a little bit of a splurge from them, the 3D printing department on this Outback. You have all weather mats, again, all weather pedals, fuse box, head release, a few less options on this one. There is that extended bolstering that you get. Power seats, and they're very comfortable. With a slightly smaller average size sunroof that is darkly tinted. Sitting inside the Forester, it feels really cozy and I love the windows, how large they are. Speaking of the windows, you should get them tinted. Speaking of tint, I actually just took my 23 Miata to the tent lady in Southern Idaho. 
It has 35% on the front, 20% on the back because that's what's legal and it makes it look a lot better, builds some street cred and it preserves the interior and your skin by blocking those harmful UV rays and keeping the temps down a lot. I've actually taken four vehicles now to the Tint Lady and it's been worth the drive every time because she does phenomenal work. As a car guy, I don't like other people to drive my car and something that she has you do is actually drive into the bay yourself. And I don't think I've ever had to wait more than an hour for a full tint job. She has multiple people working for her. She does fantastic work. So give this video a big thumbs up for trying to kick skin cancer's butt and for good business. Anyways, guys, back to the review. But back to the Forester, the seating position is really comfortable. Armrest is perfect for the door, for the center console. Everything's out of the way. It's just a really smooth place to be sitting. It feels really good. You have the heated steering wheel on this model. If you look around, you have a fantastic view and again, good visibility throughout. But the Forester's big windows do let in a lot of light, especially when that power moonroof is open. But time to fire it up. The needles do a little dance. It gets going. Again, this is a 2.5 liter boxer with 182 horse. You have a lot of features on the wheel. You have your simulated gears with the paddle shifters, all your audio voice controls on the left, adaptive cruise control on the right. You have your lighting stock on the left and your turn signals and your windshield wiper on the right. Feels really good. I really like the layout. We think that the Forester might be changed next year or the year after. So get one of these while you can if you value a CD player, an eight inch screen, and you don't like the giant screen that you're about to see in the Outback. You have a little bit more info up there, physical buttons for the climate, and then a couple of USBs, an aux, a 12 volt with a rubber line storage, piano black around the shifter, another way to go down to manual mode right there if you want to keep it in those simulated gears, and then two mode, X mode, parking, auto vehicle hold, heated seats, nothing right there, cup holders, and a decent sized center console with the 12 volt. Now we're in the Outback, and it should look very familiar to the Forester. Armrest comfort is fantastic, same with the center console, but the layout is a little bit different. We're gonna fire it up, get the wheel aligned properly, and then there are the gauges. You can still go through all your info in the center of it. Visibility, again, Fantastic in the Outback, but you can tell those windows are not quite as big as the Forester. It is a foot longer, but that rear view mirror does a fantastic job. And if you get a Touring, you can even get the digital mirror, which is kind of cool. But here's the 11.6 inch screen. It's okay, a lot of us aren't the biggest fan of it over having physical buttons because sometimes it is a little bit slow, a little bit glitchy, or it could be colder and not work as well but it does okay, it looks good. Again, we have some plugins down here. We have a storage spot for your phone or you can opt for wireless charging for a couple hundred bucks. You have electronic parking brake, go down to manual mode, play simulated gears. Again, the steering wheel controls are the same, audio and voice on the left. Adaptive cruise on the right with your heated steering wheel right there. Two decent sized cup holders and a two stage center console with a 12 volt. It's similarly sized to the Forester, although the dimensions are slightly different. And then on both, you have your garage door opener and your compass, which is really nice. Now to the back seat of the Forester. The door panel follows the same theme as the front, very Subaru in design. And it's nice, it's soft touch, and it's an extremely large handle. Who has a hand that big? The speakers aren't advertised back here, but we know what they are, bottle holder snacks. Again, miniature sized Subaru on the door, still with a little bit of grip, so when you're standing up to get to those rails, you can easily access them. And then a 40-60 split, the seats drop easily, and these seats do recline with that handle, that little pull tab right there. Sitting behind herself, I'm 5'11", I have a double mat pocket in front of probably 4 or 5 inches of room, so I can be a backseat driver and I can even put any pam flips that I find right there. I have heated seats, USBs, ventilation, and two cup holders in the center. So sitting back here with all those windows, all the visibility and that giant moonroof, it's honestly a really comfortable place to be. And if I need more comfort, if I need to turn on those heated seats or climb, I think you'd be really comfortable on a long haul trip, taking a nap back here. Whoever thought being a backseat driver would be so rewarding.
On the Outback, door panel, again, looks very familiar. You guys should know what they look like. And then we have that piano black surface. Otherwise, nothing really stands out. Nothing is surprising. You also have grip right here to get up to its adjustable roof rails. And then a similar 60-40 split, but with a button instead of a pull tab. They load pretty much flat. You could car cam back here pretty easily. And then that's the handle rather than the pull string to use your reclining seats. Double mat pocket again with the pan flips. You can see there's about the same amount of room, maybe a tiny bit less, at least with where the driver's seat is right now, but I had them both to where I was comfortable. Ventilation, heated seats, USBs, and two cup holders. So if you're gonna go on a long haul in the back of either of these Subaru SUVs, you're gonna be really comfortable. Now you guys gotta see something really interesting. Remember how the Outbacks a fit longer than the Forester? They have basically the same cubic capacity. The Outback is 32 and a half cubic feet with the seats up. The Forester has 29, so it is down three and a half feet right there. But when you drop the seats, the Outback grows to 75.7 feet and the Forester grows to 74, so it cuts that difference in half. You can see what these look like and there's even handles to drop the seats. It's not as long but there's still a whole lot of room. There's the sunshade. You can see the Harmony Kardon sub back here, some bag tie downs, another seat dropper, a little bit of space behind the wheel well. And then your tools are down here. You have a little bit of extra storage and then a temporary spare. But if you go with the Forester, you get a full size spare. Back here, it's just a little bit more roomy. The subwoofer is on the driver's side. You still have the handles to drop the seats, some bag clips, a mesh storage compartment behind the rear passenger. And then your tools up here, not quite as much space, but you do have the area for the privacy shade. And then your spare tire hiding down there with a little bit of extra room. What do you guys think? Which one would fit you better? Both of these have a power rear lift gate and then the lock feature, and it moves pretty quick. You can see the button for the pin code right there on the Outback. It's a really nice feature. Subaru has done a fantastic job engineering these engines, and there's a lot of similarities between them. Remember, you can have a 2.5 boxer in either option because that's the base Outback. Ours over there, though, has the turbo. But the base 2.5 boxer makes 182 horse. All of your reservoirs and battery are right up top. The oil filter right there. Alternator on top and front with the serpentine belt on the passenger side. It's just a really clean layout. It does the job okay, zero to 60 in my area, 4,000 feet of altitude. These typically, I don't care what they're rated at. What they actually do though, is usually nine to about 10 and a half, 11 seconds in the summer. So it's not gonna be a textbook rating. That's why you might wanna consider an Outback if you need the power, if you live in the mountains, if you are gonna tow, if you're gonna have your family and you want passing power on the highway, going around farm equipment, tractors, semis, whatever it is in your area, it makes a huge difference. These turbo engines, do zero to 60 in about six and a half seconds, and altitude does not affect them nearly as much as the naturally aspirated boxer. That's testing, I've done it on dozens of Subarus, and that's just the real world results. Otherwise, you can see a lot of the similar theme, air filter on the passenger side, all of your reservoirs, top mount oil filter, serpentine belt, alternator, dipstick, everything's right, basically in the same location. I've had 27,000 miles on my Turbo Outback and it's been flawless. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I haven't started car camping like I was hoping I would when I bought my Wilderness a year and a half ago, but it does have pros for some items, some reasons like that. But if you live in a city, if you don't need the extra length and you don't care about the Turbo or you live at an altitude, just sea level or somewhere where you don't need the extra power, the Forester is really convenient with better visibility, a slightly shorter wheelbase, slightly more maneuverable, and it fits in spaces and parking spots a little bit better. It really is a good option. But the Outback, it's a wagon, it's cool, it's iconic. I really like that they still make this. I like that it's a turbo wagon, all wheel drive, lifted, you know, up to nine and a half inches if you go wilderness. It's just cool that Subaru gives us options. So even though their cargo capacity and their comfort is very similar, they have the same safety features for the most part. I like having options and so does the people because they sell well over 100,000 a year each. If the refreshed Forester still has manual climate controls and a turbo option, I would honestly probably opt for that myself. But I love the Outback and if you've followed my channel for any amount of time, you guys know I like my Outback. What do you like more? What have you driven? What are you looking at or comparing these two with other brands? Leave your comments below. If you like my style, please consider liking this video to help it get shared and subscribe if you wanna see more. I've done a whole lot of Subaru reviews, but I also do other brands too. 
all in all these are both fantastic vehicles i think you can't go wrong either way if you pick one of these you're set you made a good decision plus their resale value is traditionally really good big shout out for twin falls subaru letting me borrow their cars for the afternoon even on a windy day like today crimson red autumn green these are some fun colors to get to play around with and get to experience and show you guys until next time guys take care